So just to make things clear, just to make sure that you've understood what is going on, perhaps it might be a good idea for you to think about where you might place the next partition. You, you understand that what we are trying to do is to keep making partitions which are as pure as possible. So given that that is the case, looking at this particular diagram, which of the groups would you like to partition first? You've got three groups. One of them is already perfect, so there's no sense in, in trying to partition this any further. This is already perfect. We can let it be. So of these two, which one would you like to partition? On which variable would you like to partition it? And where would you like to put the partition? Again, I would say, uh, don't be too tense about getting the correct answer. We'll be looking at the technique shortly. But for now, I just want you to think about what you would do in this position, just to make sure that you're on the right track. Again, pause the video, think about it a little bit, and we'll talk about it as soon as you finish and come back. Okay, so you're back. Now, I can see there are two places where we can place a partition and get perfectly homogeneous group. So for example, we'll select this group here, the one on top, and we can draw a line right here, a vertical line right here. If you draw that line, then you get a perfect partition on the right hand side. Absolutely perfect. There's no all owners. So that looks like a good place to draw a line to do the next partition, which is select the top region and partition it at an income value of less than 80 because that's what the partition represents right you see here income value of less than 80 so this is where we're putting the line so that's one possible place another possible place also might be to select again the same top partition but put the line here the lot size greater than about 21.5 or whatever it is so if you draw the line there once again you get a very pure partition on top and also a more homogeneous partition at the bottom okay so those I think are two obvious possibilities uh, but also there might be another thing to do because if you do the partition here then you're getting a really good partition on top but the partition at the bottom is actually becoming less homogeneous right so if you draw this line then you end up with four owners and three non owners here which may not be a very good idea instead we might actually be better off partitioning here uh, and getting two groups Okay, or maybe partitioning up, whatever, right? So we look at the technique. The technique will suggest us a concrete way to do this. But I just want to uh, got into this discussion because I want to make sure that you are thinking about it as we go forward. Okay, so what we're really trying to do is this recursive partitioning. So we'll keep chopping till we get as homogeneous a set of partitions as possible. I am keeping on saying as homogeneous as possible because perfection may not always be possible. Right? For example, you may have two people who've got the same income, the same lot size. One of them is an owner, one of them is a non-owner. Right? So no matter what you do, those two points will stick to each other. Because if you look, if you imagine the chart, the both the points are exactly on the same place. So it is never possible to have any group that will separate them because they are on top of each other, right? So in those cases, if you have data like that, it is impossible to get a perfect partitioning. In our present example, there are no such data items, so we will actually get a perfect partitioning. So what in recursive partitioning, this is what we are doing. Keep on chopping, keep on chopping till we get as homogeneous a set of partitions as possible. Okay, so let's now look at a formal description of the procedure that we'll be using. So this is a procedure that we'll be using to grow the trees. So first what we are doing as we just did in our riding mowers case, put all the cases into one set. So that was our initial diagram with all with just one single group with all the cases. Then we select an impure set that is a set which is not completely homogeneous. Select it to partition. Initially of course we've got only one set so we select it. But subsequently, as you saw, we have choices. So we select some impure set to partition. Now, how do you select a set? We'll look at that shortly. But the procedure says select a set. So we select one, and then we consider all possible partitions of the set. All the possible partitions. Again, we'll see what those are. 
and then for each partition we'll see whether uh, the extent to which it creates homogeneous groups okay and then we choose the one that does the best job of creating homogeneous groups once again what do you mean by best hang on we'll get there and then we say well are all the groups we have as pure as is possible if that is the case we stop we are done we've done the complete partitioning and we can see the tree from this but if you still have cases which are which are which is possible to improve upon then select one of the groups that you have which is impure again consider all the possible partitions perform the best partition again see whether we have now finished whether with all the groups we've got are all pure if not we continue the process at some point you reach a stage when you cannot do any more partitioning because everything is pure or whatever you do you cannot improve things then you stop this is the process of growing a tree very simple very straightforward so we are all the time talking about perform the best partition and we know that when we say best we are trying to say perform that partition which improves the homogeneity as much as possible the maximum improvement in homogeneity so what exactly do we mean now it's time for us to start putting a number on this measure of homogeneity and there are two different measures that are used the first one is called as the gini index which is a measure of how impure a set is okay now uh, it's a mathematical measure and in order to understand the measure there are two different numbers or two different notations that we need to use first m is the number of classes so in our present example we've got two classes in the riding mowers example there are two classes a case can either be an owner or a non owner so that is m which is the number of cases and pk is the proportion of elements in class k so in our present example p1 which is uh, let's say p owner is 12 because there are 12 owners in our data set and p non owners is also 12 because we've got uh, uh, 12 non owners of course these are not the numbers we are talking about we are talking about the proportions so it's 0.5 initially the whole set has got equal numbers of owners and non owners so pk the proportion of the number of elements in each of the cases is 0.5 right so that's what really m and pk mean so given m and pk the gini index is measure is calculated using this particular formula one minus and then you take all the cases in our uh, all the classes in our case we have two classes and then you uh, add up the squared value of the proportions so 1 minus sigma k equals 1 to m pk square and in our present case uh, this can take a value between 0 to m minus 1 by m okay so in our present case that is going to be 0 to m minus 1 which is two classes 1 2 minus 1 is 1 divided by m so our Gini index here can go from 0 to 0 0.5 it doesn't matter 0 0.5 is the maximum value that it can take in this particular case so for example if you had a proportion of uh, owners was 1 and non owners owners was 0 then you get a Gini index of 1 minus 0 that is 1 So the Gini calculation for the initial set, we've got M is two owners, M is two, owner and non-owner. P1 is 0.5, P2 is 0.5. So our Gini index is going to be 1 minus 0.5 square minus 0.5 square, that is 0 0.5. Okay, so that's going to be the value of the Gini index in this particular case. Another measure of the impurity of a set is what is called entropy. Once again, the notation m and pk have the same meaning as before and entropy is measured in this way which is sigma k equals 1 to m minus sigma k equals 1 to m pk log to the base 2 of pk so in the present example this can also vary from 0 to 1 and doing the calculation for our present example shows us that uh, the entropy of the initial set is 1 now entropy is a measure that varies from 0 to 1 and 1 indicates 
the maximum amount of entropy. Entropy in physics it refers to confusion or disorder. So when you've got equal cases of both classes, then that is complete disorder because it has no, uh, no order at all. Anything and everything is possible. Whereas if you had purity, all owners, all non-owners, that would lead to an entropy of zero. So that's the idea. So these are two measures that are used. Uh, we are not going to delve further into these measures. These measures are simply used by the, by the rattle package or any data mining package you use. They use these measures. Uh, for your information, uh, rattle uses entropy, but you could also customize rattle to use uh, Gini. Okay, so we've got the lot size income. Initially, your Gini is 0.5, entropy is 1. That's what we calculated in the last couple of slides. Now, when you consider split, right? So what we want to do is we want to split this group into two parts such that the total resulting measurement of either Gini or entropy is better. So if it's entropy, we want it to be less. If it's Gini, we also want it to be less. We want to improve impurity, reduce impurity. That's what we're trying to do. So when you uh, consider the split, so now let's consider all the splits that are possible. So first, we can split either on lot size or on income. Those are the two possibilities for us. If you consider lot size, then here I have shown all the values of lot size that are in the data set, the 24 lot sizes. And we have shown them in sorted order, increasing order. So it is possible for us to place a split here. That is, we could say lot size less than or equal to 14.4, which is a midpoint of 14 and 14.8, and lot size greater than 14.4. That would divide the group there. Or you could divide it there, or you could divide it there, or you could divide it there, or there, or there, and so on. Right? But you can divide it only between two successive values that are different. So you cannot divide it between 17.6 and 17.6. That doesn't make sense because they're all the same value. So the next possible division would be between 17.6 and 18.4. Okay? So all the possible divisions are the midpoints of two successive values that are different. So 14.4 and then between 14.8 and 16 is 15.4 and so on. So those are all. So in a similar fashion, we can think about possible divisions as all of these points. So those are all the divisions that you could do on lot sizes. Similarly, when you consider incomes, you could do partitioning at all of these positions. So totally, if you look at all of these, we've got 38 different partitions that are possible. So initially, when we've got the data, there are 38 different partitions which are available to us. And what we want to do is to choose the one that is best. In other words, the one that reduces the overall impurity most. The overall impurity current now, let's say you're talking about Gini, is 0.5. Or if you're talking about entropy, it is 1. Now you want to choose this partition, a partition, which takes that to as low a value as possible from among all, these, all of these 38 values. Okay, So you may be thinking, wow, 38 different calculations. I have to do all of these calculations and find the best. We don't have to do that. The computer will do that. In fact, if you've got lots of data and if you've got let's say 15 different variables and each variable has thousand different values it's quite possible then you really have close to 15,000 different splits that are possible in the beginning but who cares the computer is going to do it and it'll do it in a fraction of a second fraction of a microsecond so that's not a problem so this is really what uh, partitioning is all about we consider all the possible partitionings choose the one that reduces impurity the most. 